You're listening to a Broadening My Horizons on Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, please visit parisundergroundradio.com. Hello, and welcome to a Broadening My Horizons on Paris Underground Radio. My name is Abby Riffle, and I'm a 21-year-old college student from a small town in Kansas who is living in Paris for the summer, and will be bringing you along with me as I discover the city. Hello, everyone. So it has been kind of a little bit of time since I last talked to you guys. It's been a whole week for me since I arrived back in the United States, more specifically in Kansas. And so today's podcast is going to be me talking about just what it's been like to be back and how I've adjusted to coming back. So on my way back, things went pretty smoothly. I flew out of the Charles de Gaulle Airport to Dallas, Texas, and then from Dallas, I flew to Kansas City. I have mentioned a couple times of how much I do not like the Charles de Gaulle Airport because for me, it's really confusing and I can never navigate it correctly. And I'm always, I feel like just wandering around and I still stand by this because Sure enough, when I was trying to fly back to the U.S., I got so confused and I was walking for like 45 minutes at one point, just hoping I was going in the right direction. Thankfully, I was able to like figure it out because I got to the airport super, super early because I knew that I was probably going to get lost and I would need time to figure my way around. So I'm really glad that I did that because I didn't have to stress about being on time and I could wander and try to find my way at my own pace, and I didn't have to feel super rushed. And thankfully, I was able to find my way, and I ended up exactly where I needed to be in order to fly back. Still confusing, still not my favorite airport, but I did figure it all out in the end. My flight was like nine and a half hours, and so I probably spent about a little over 10 hours on that plane because of boarding and getting off. And that flight was actually probably the roughest out of all of them I took during this trip. Just because on the plane ride back, and I feel bad saying this because like, who do I think I am to be able to say this? But I genuinely could not help it. Every single American was just annoying me on that flight. And I don't want to come across as like pretentious as like, oh, I'm better than all the Americans. Because obviously it's like a me thing if I'm the only one getting annoyed. But I don't know if it was just because I was really tired or if it was because I had spent this month like not really around any loud people. But anytime somebody spoke on that plane, it just felt really, really loud. And that was really bugging me on that flight. But I also feel bad because these people weren't doing anything wrong. They were just talking and you're allowed to talk. It was just like a lot for me at that moment. And I was probably, you know, overwhelmed with having to like fly by myself and all that. But that was something that made the trip really rough. And I also quickly learned that getting home is not nearly as fun as getting to your destination. When I was flying to Paris, it honestly did not feel that long at all. It felt like the time just flew by, but on the way back, it was like time was going almost painfully slow to get there. And I think it's because when I'm like getting there, the anticipation is just so high and everything was new to me and it was exciting. And then on the way back, nothing's new. I'd already done all the exciting things and I just wanted to get home and see my family at that point. But finally, after a long, long day, I landed at the Kansas City airport and I was picked up by my family and I went back home. It has been really weird to be back. I guess I expected this like big change when I got back, but it kind of feels like the past month was just this long dream or almost like this entirely separate part of my life. I don't know. It feels like nothing has changed at all. And it's been weird adjusting and like reminding myself that the past month did actually happen. And I did actually spend a month in Paris. 
because it just feels so weird to be back. It feels like time was frozen and just waiting for me to get back, which is obviously not true, but that's how it feels. But while I was in Paris, I began making a list of things that I wanted to do once I got home. And so I began crossing things off of that list as soon as I got home. The very first thing on that list was going to Taco Bell. I love Taco Bell so much. There's one right next to my campus where I go to school. So during the school year, I'm like always going there. While I was in Paris, I missed it so much. And I actually think it was just like Mexican food in general that I missed because I didn't eat any while I was in Paris. But for me specifically, I was like set on Taco Bell. When I got picked up from the airport, sure enough, Taco Bell was our first stop on the way home. And it was so good. And for me, it was like my perfect meal for coming back and being in America. But it was actually kind of funny because my roommate in Paris had told me that she'd never actually eaten at a Taco Bell before. And, you know, I was telling her about it and I was like... (laughs) So Taco Bell is not actually that good, but it is amazing. That's the best way I can describe Taco Bell itself and that first meal I had because the food quality, not that great. The flavors, again, not super great, but something about that meal is also like everything. It's, it was everything I needed at that moment. So I don't know how Taco Bell does that, but They really do walk that line. And with that being said, when I went to Paris, they told us to bring medicine just in case the change of the foods upset our stomachs. And so when I went over there, I was expecting, you know, my body to go through this change as I went through the different kinds of foods. But I had no problems when I went over there. However, (laughs) Nobody warned me about the change of food for when I come back. I've had a bigger challenge adjusting from French food to American food than I did adjusting from American food to French food. So with about every meal I've eaten since I've come back, I have felt nauseous and had like an upset stomach afterwards. And it's kind of sad because when I was in Paris, I felt really good and I had a lot of energy and my body felt the best it had felt in a really long time. And I think it was because the quality of food that I was eating there, like it's just better ingredients. And now my stomach kind of hurts all the time. I'm just sad about it because I probably won't get that quality of food again unless I go back to France or I don't know, I pay a lot of money for organic and better food here, but I don't really have a lot of money to spend on that food. So my stomach's just going to have to adjust, I guess. The next thing on my list of things to do when I get home was to get a coffee. And I'm not talking about the espresso that's like all over the place in Paris. I'm talking about that sweet, sugary coffee that I was talking about in my first podcast that I gave up for my trip. Yeah, I was craving that throughout the whole month. And I bought some sweeter coffees at the grocery store when I was in Paris, but it just wasn't the same as going into a coffee shop and getting your cup of it with the foam. And it's all sweet. And sure enough, I got one as soon as I could when I got home. And it was amazing. And I think what made it so great, I'm not even joking when I say this, was the ice. I missed ice in my drink so much while I was in Paris. That was really something I was not expecting to miss because I wouldn't think that ice would be so important. But I did miss it. And that actually leads to the next thing that I wanted to do in America, which was drink a huge glass of ice water because I don't think I had iced water that entire month that I was there in France. The water in the restaurants comes in those pitchers with those little bitty glasses, so you'd never get like a big old glass. And sometimes the water there isn't even chilled 
which is fine. Like I obviously got by, but it made me just really crave a huge glass of just ice filled to the brim, filled with cold water and just chug it. And when I got home, I made myself a huge glass of ice water and it was so refreshing. It was one of my favorite things I've had since I got home. And then another thing on my list was wearing athletic shorts and an oversized t-shirt as an acceptable outfit to go out and about in. I think I've worn this, an oversized t-shirt and athletic shorts every single day since I got home. During the summer when it is so hot and I'm not going to work and I'm not going to classes, that outfit is my go-to when I'm like going grocery shopping or when I'm walking around town or going and getting my sugary coffees or like whatever it is that's not necessarily important to dress up to, that's what I'm wearing. And I really missed that when I was in Paris because I felt like I always had to be dressed up and not necessarily super nice, but I at least had to be somewhat put together whenever I went out. That kind of got annoying towards the end of the trip because sometimes I just wanted to go to the grocery store and I didn't want to have to get all the way dressed up for the day. But I felt like I couldn't just be casual. I felt like I had to at least put on jeans or something. And like I said, I've been wearing an oversized t-shirt and athletic shorts every single day since I've been back home. It's just so comfortable and I missed it so much. And the last thing on my list was making a French yogurt cake. This is actually something that I learned about from one of the other podcasts on Paris Underground Radio. It's the podcast Navigating the French on the episode over the word cake. In that episode, they talk about this really easy French recipe for a cake that's made in a lot of French households. And when I was listening, I thought that it sounded really good. And I also thought it sounded easy enough that I could maybe try to make it. And so that was something that I wanted to do when I got home. And I did. I made it. And I actually think I messed it up a little bit, which is funny considering it's a super simple recipe. But for the most part, it was good. And I really enjoyed getting to try it and bake it. And I had my family try some of it. So that was just really fun to be able to bring that back. But those were all the things I wanted to do when I got home. And I've enjoyed, you know, crossing them off my list as I do them. In general, just adjusting back has been a lot different than how I thought it would be. I thought jet lag would be awful when I got back, but it really hasn't affected me that much. I haven't had any trouble sleeping. I was a little tired during my first full day back, but I was able to stay awake throughout the day. And I think I'm back on, you know, that Midwest time zone, which is really good. I was really nervous that it was going to be become really bad for me, but it hasn't been at all. Honestly, the biggest adjustment since coming back was probably just the 4th of July. Just coming from a month in Paris where, you know, I'm removed from the United States for the longest I've ever been. And then coming back and within the first week I'm back, there's flags everywhere and there's parades and fireworks and fried food. It just kind of felt like I was being punched in the face with America after being gone for so long. So at some points during that day, I was like, okay, this feels like a lot right now. But it was also kind of nice to have so much Americanness surrounding me after being gone too. At some points I had to like just stop and like sit down in my house and just rest. But it also was nice getting to celebrate that after not being around it for so long. Other than that, adjusting back has been fairly easy and everyone here has been like so eager about wanting to hear about my trip and they've been so understanding that it's like all I can talk about at the moment. And so I feel like that's made things really smooth too because I was worried about coming back and like annoying everyone because Paris was all I would talk about. But I feel like I've done kind of a good job at not only talking about it, but I also feel like my family and friends have been very gracious in listening to me talk about it. If you are enjoying this podcast, you might enjoy our sister podcast, Don't Miss This. 
where host Jennifer Garrity fills you in on the best of what's going on each week in Paris. From art installations to author's talks to tours and everything in between. You can listen on parisundergroundradio.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. A Broadening My Horizons will return right after the break. Welcome back to A Broadening My Horizons. I had someone ask me the other day that if I could do anything different, what would I do? And I actually don't think I would change a single thing about my trip. I made sure to go into my trip without a lot of expectations, if that makes sense, because I wanted to be as open to everything as I could be. I didn't want to have specific things in mind and then get disappointed because they didn't line up with what I was thinking. And I feel like doing that helped me substantially on my trip. I don't really feel like there is anything that I missed that I was so disappointed for not being able to go to or anything that I regret not doing or doing. I've spent a lot of time in my life wishing that I would have done things differently. But for this trip, I didn't want that. I just wanted to be there and to embrace it. And I'm happy to say that there was genuinely nothing that I would have changed. Now, does that mean that I had the perfect trip? No, of course not. There were a lot of bumps along the way, a lot of frustrations, but I think that I did the best I could for the situation I was in, and I don't think there's anything to regret in trying your best. So this is the end for my first week back podcast, and the next one you guys will be listening to will be summarizing my first month back and it will also be the last podcast for this series so thank you guys so much for listening to what i have to say thank you for listening to a broadening my horizons on paris underground radio i'm your host abby riffle if you liked this podcast please make sure to rate it and give it a review If you want to get in touch, you can reach me at hello at parisundergroundradio.com or on Instagram at abbyriffle underscore. Thank you for listening.